10.1 solving quadratic equations. It's MA912 AR 3.8. We're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring, solve quadratic equations by the square root property, and use substitution to solve equations of the quadratic form. So in example one, it says x squared plus 5x equals to 24. So in order to solve for, by um, factoring quadratic equations, we're going to set it equal to zero. So first thing we're going to do is move the 24 over. So now we become x squared plus 5x minus 24 equal to zero. So now we're looking at the polynomial. We need to find factors that give us negative 24 and add to 5. So they need to multiply to be negative 24 and add to be positive 5. So we have 8 and 3, 6 and 4, 2 and 12 to name a few. Remember, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So we know that we have two binomials. One is positive and one is negative. The ones that can get us to five are eight and three. So to become positive five, the eight had to be positive and the three had to be negative. And you have your X's. So we're at this point. Now, remember, we want the inside to equal zero. So we want to do the opposite of the sign. So if it's positive, we come out negative. If we're negative, we come out positive. So our answers are negative eight and three. On B, it says 3x squared equals 4 minus 11x. Again, we want to set it equal to 0. Highest power is on the left, so we want to move everything to the left. So we're going to subtract 4 and add 11x. Make sure you're in decreasing power, so we become 3x squared plus 11x minus 4 equals 0. So first thing we want to do, since the leading coefficient is not value of 1, we want to see if we can go and factor out a GCF. 3, 11, and 4 are not factors of each other. So what we're going to do is Columbian method. So immediately draw two binomials. Leading coefficient is 3, so we're going to write 3x, 3x. Then you're going to do 3 times the negative 4. So 3 times your negative 4 gives us negative 12. Negative 12 is the top of the crossbar. You need to multiply to 12 and add to 11. Well, in that instance, I would go with 12 and 1, 1 being positive and 1 being negative. To get positive 11, the 12 had to be the positive, the 1 had to be the negative. When you get to this point, reduce first. So I can reduce by 3, so become x plus 4, and then we have 3x minus 1 equaling 0. Now, in this instance, remember what I said. It's the opposite of the sign, so we become x equals negative 4. Now here, we're going to end up with a fraction. This is going to be the numerator, and this is going to be the denominator. So x equals positive 1 over 3. So your answers are going to be negative 4, comma, positive 1 third. Notice that I'm using set builder notation because they're exact values. On C, it says 9x squared plus 12 equals 3 plus 12x plus 5x. Highest leading coefficient and power is on the left, so I'm going to move everything to the left. So first thing we're going to do is subtract 3, subtract 12x, subtract 5x squared to the left. So we have subtract 5x squared, subtract 12x, subtract 3. So we become 9 minus the 5, that is 4x squared negative 12x, and then 12 minus 3, that's positive 9, equaling 0. So when we come to this, leading coefficient is not a 1, so 4, cannot, 4 can go into 12, but it cannot go into 9. So we're going to use Columbian method. So you're going to draw two parentheses. Leading coefficient is 4, so I'm going to write 4x, 4x. Then you're going to do 4 times a 9. So 4 times a 9, that's your 36. So 36 is the top of the crossbar and it needs to add to negative 12. Well, in this instance, I would always think of 6 and 6 because they can add to 12. And if they're both negative, there's your negative 12. So we are a negative 6 and negative 6. Reduce, both of these are reducible by the value of 2. So you get 2x minus 3. Again, 2x minus 3. Notice that we have a double solution here because it's the same value. So remember, this is the numerator, this is the denominator. So x equals positive 3 halves. We only have one answer because it's a double root. 
Okay, example two, we're gonna be using the square root property. So it says three X squared equals 15. So when we want the square root property, we wanna make sure that we have the X squared isolated. So we are gonna divide both sides by three. So we get X squared equals five. And again, square root means you're taking the square root of both sides. But when we take the square root of both sides, it causes a plus minus situation. So we get X equals positive negative square root of five. When we look at B, it says parentheses X minus two squared equal to 10. Again, you're taking the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of member, it's an imaginary two here. So the twos cancel themselves out, leaving you with X minus two. Again, remember it's a plus minus situation. You cannot take the square root of 10. It's not a perfect square root. So then all you gotta do is add two over. So we have X equals two plus and minus the square root of 10. So if this was the homework situation, you would enter it as two plus the square root of 10 and two minus the square root of 10. On C it says parentheses three X minus six close squared minus eight equal to zero. First thing you wanna isolate the power of two. So we need to move the eight first. So I'm gonna add eight over. So now we see three X minus six squared equals eight. Then you are going to take the square root of both sides. So we get three X minus six equals positive and negative square root of eight. Now square root of eight breaks down to the square root of four and square root of two. So we see three X minus six equals two plus and minus plus and minus two square roots of two because the square root of four is two. Now we need to bring the six over. So we're gonna add six over. So we get three X equals six plus and minus two square roots of two. The last step is to divide everything by three because you wanna isolate X. So you're dividing everything by three. Now here, you have two ways of doing it. You can make it one common fraction or two separate individual ones. I would go with one common fraction and write it as six plus and minus two squirts of two, all divided by three. This is the route I would go. Example four, diameter of a softball. So it says the surface area of a sphere of radius r is given by s equals four pi r squared. The surface area of a softball is 144 over pi square inches. Find the diameter d of the softball. So first thing, they gave us a formula that has radius, but they want us to find diameter. So first thing, remember that radius is the diameter divided by two, or two times the radius is your diameter. So they gave us a formula they want us to use. So you're gonna say S equals four pi R squared. And they told you that the surface area, which is our S, is 144 over pi. So we're gonna reverse engineer. So S is now 144 over pi equaling four pi r squared. Notice that we have pi on this side and pi here. So I wanna get rid of the pi by multiplying both sides by pi. So I'm gonna multiply by pi, multiply by pi. So now we see 144 equals four pi squared r squared. Remember that pi normally we know as 3.14 and we're squaring it. So we have 144 equals four times 3.14 squared r squared. Remember to square the 3.14 first. So we see 144 equals four times 9.8596. I used the entire value of it. I'm multiplying that by four. So now we have 144 equals 39.4384 with R squared. We're gonna divide both sides by that value. So we have 144 divided by 39.4384. So we have 
3.6513 is what I'm going to go for the significant digits equaling r squared. Now we want r by itself. So you need to take the square root of both sides. So we get 1.911 is equal to r. But remember, you need to multiply by 2 to get the diameter. So the diameter is 3.82. We'll go with that amount. 